Sheelan Podcast, episode 14. Oh my goodness. I am Jen of jensheelan.com, and this is my co-host, Doug the Dog. What do you think, buddy? Here, you can have that back. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back, and if you are a new viewer, welcome. And if you like this podcast, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> the subscribe button below. Today is Friday, August 19th of 2016, and we are going to get right to it. I have some good stuff to share with you guys today. <laughs> Wait till you see what I did. <laughs> you don't even know. I'm like, basically, I've been telling myself, what'd you do for like the last few days? Oh my goodness. We'll get to that. You can find me on various forms of social media. I'm on Ravelry, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Tumblr. I have a Ravelry group for the Jen Sheelan podcast as well. So come on over and check that out and you'll see I have a thread open for every episode so you can tell me what you thought. Right, buddy? Are you ready to get started? Well, so somebody is gonna get treat shamed today. This guy, oh yes, and everybody's going, oh, what he do? He doesn't deserve it. Oh, this guy, this cute face, do you see this? Cute face was so fresh. So fresh. He went on a walk the other day. And what he likes to do is he <laughs> likes to lay down if he sees somebody walking a dog. So he'll do the creep and just lay down and won't move until they pass us. Not yet. And he did that a couple times on the walk the other day. And he was really super fresh. And then I wanted to go one way and he'd want to go another. I had to take a detour because of him. And oh my goodness, we come up onto the street to the smell of awful dead thing. Oh, you know how your mouth fills up and you know it, it, it's something died and it's all... So it was his fault we had to de go a different route and then we bumped into awful dead thing smell. Which of course he doesn't mind. He's like, where is it so I can roll in it? So fresh. So you shall be treat shamed. You ready? First you gotta give me a high five. Good boy. And now you ready? Oh, we gotta do it. I know mama's so mean. Mama's so mean. You hold it. Frank Sheelan taught him this, by the way. Go. Aww. He doesn't catch it. Sometimes he'll like kind of grab it as it drops, but other times he's lazy and just drops it to the ground and eats it. But he holds it. Go boy, Dougie. That's what you get. Okay. Penance paid. <laughs> okay, the podcast that I was listening to while I got ready today was the Legacy Knits podcast. Now, I know I've mentioned them before. Um, I'm sure you know who they are. They're quite popular. They're a video podcast on YouTube. So much fun to watch. It's Chelsea and Sue. Sue, Sue is the mom and Chelsea's the daughter. And they're super fun to watch. And oh my goodness, you guys. Oh my goodness, you guys. They came out with yarn. They're dyeing yarn. What? They're dyeing yarn. I know. Not only that, they're dyeing yarn in the Hocus Pocus, like the movie Hocus Pocus. They're doing it in Hocus Pocus colors. Like they have a colorway for each sister and like the, the book of shit, like the book and oh my, oh my goodness. And I happened to be, it was last Saturday when they launched at 10 in the morning, and I happened to be sitting at the computer and noticed it was like 10.03. And I'm like, oh, that's right. So I go check their shop, and it was limited. People snapped things up that quickly. I actually put something in my cart and was cart jacked. That's how fast they were selling out. I got one. <laughs> I got Sarah Sanderson, and I got it in the sparkly <laughs> yarn. <laughs> it's mine. Yay! I was so hoping that it would be here today so I could put it on my show and off se uh, se segment. But it's not here yet, but it's on its way. So I will show you guys on the next episode. Uh -huh. And I might show off and go a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, let's get right into it. I think I said that already, but let's really get into it. Right? I know, I'm sorry. I know you're embarrassed. I'm so sorry. No, I'm not sorry. You were a brat. You were a brat. I love you so much, but you were fresh. <laughs> On to spinning right round. Okay, what do I have today? I have the tool that I use to actually learn how to spin. This is a drop spindle, and it's made with purple heartwood, which I was introduced to through my friend Sheelan. He told me about this wood, and his favorite color is purple. He loves, he loves purple. And I love this wood. It's super pretty. See? And you can see I actually have some fiber on this poor spindle that's been on there for quite some time. But this is actually the tool that I used to learn how to spin and then to go over to learn to spin on a wheel. 
it was really confusing to me to try to learn how to spin on the wheel. There's just so much going on. You're moving your feet, it's sucking the yarn in, you're, you got a draft. Like, you can park and draft with the wheel, but it was just a little rough for me to try to get the concept of what I was doing. So I learned with the drop spindle, and oh my goodness, boom, I had it. I was like, oh, that's what it's doing. And then with the wheel, it was a little bit easier to know what was going on. It was just a matter of getting that rhythm of my feet going, the yarn pulling in, and doing that all at a, a nice pace. So my Purple Heart Drop Spindle, I believe this was from Spunky Eclectic too. And I think I got it, I'm gonna say it's been at least three years ago now. Three years ago? A spa, yeah. So I did it, I love this little thing. So every now and then I'll pull it out and I'll use it just, you know, for just because, for memories. Where are you going? Can you sit? You're gonna sit right in front of me, you're gonna sit, well, there you go. Good boy, good lay down. <laughs> Next up is selfish knitting. Now, if you watched the last episode, you saw that I have a huge list of things to work on right now. I am seriously knit, knit overwhelmed, a little bit, but in a good way. I'm working on good stuff. I am working on a big knit for Amy from Knit Collage, and I've got about half the list done. Yay! And I will show you my progress, because last time all I had was the hat. I didn't have the physical stuff to show you, but now that I'm knitting it up, I can show you guys. All right. First up is the Snuggle Up Blanket, and that's used knit out of their uh, yarn sister in the colorway Driftwood. Look at this blanket. Look how fun that is. So squishy and yummy, and you just want to just want to cuddle up in it, but not today. It's hot. <laughs> the only thing it's missing is the tassels, and I have to just finish making them. But I could show you what they look like. So you put, I think it's six tassels on each end of the blanket, and they look a little something. I just have to squish these up a little bit and maybe trim the ends. A little something like that. Dougie seems to like them. <laughs> is, that, is that good? Yeah? You approve? So yeah, you put those on either end of the blanket. Isn't that fun? I love that. I see I love tassels now. I'm all about tassels now. Totally. I really dig these. What do you, you say? You purring. Right? Really? Hopefully the sound of his purring is picking up on camera. <laughs> I have a new iPad now. I actually upgraded. When my last one wouldn't let me upload my movie, it was like, I too full. And it was only a 12.8 gig iPad. It was a few years old. I think it was an iPad 2. And it was full. It just was like gasping as I was trying to upload a movie. So it was time I upgraded. So we shall see how this episode comes out. It's kind of my tester, so bear with me. Yes. I know. What else do you say? He's purring, my goodness. I think he knows he's forgiven now, so he's being cute. Next up from Nick Collage that I worked on is, what is it called? It is their Sanctuary Tassel Pillow. I wanna make sure I get the names right so I'm checking my notes. Now this one, I haven't sewn it together. I'm gonna to send it back to Amy. She has the filler, but I can give you an idea. And this will have tassels as well. That's what these are for, but I'm just going to set them separate. I have to make the other tassels for the blanket, too. But this will give you an idea what it looks like. Fun. So pretty. So you sew it together with the gray, and then you put the tassels on. How fun is that for, like, a little accent for your home? Just like that fun pillow. Like, I could totally see this in my craft room. So fun. Yes, and that one. Let's see. It was made out of their pixie dust colorway in their boho blush and their sister colorway, or sister yarn, in soft gray and that yarn was super super soft to work with I actually really enjoyed that I think that was my favorite so far that I worked with was the sister yarn in that gray super soft and yummy so there's the blanket and then I shall introduce you to I'm, I've been calling it my kryptonite I don't know what happened with this hat but I, it did not like me <laughs> this hat was not my friend so yeah it's been dubbed my kryptonite where is it oh there it is okay this is their Snow Bunny hat, their Snow Bunny cable hat, and it is made out of their yarn uh, Castaway in Driftwood. Now here's the example, I see here's my little sample that they sent me. Look at the little flowers on it too. <laughs> so fun in the pom poms. Super fun hat. It just didn't want me to knit it. It was just like, no, you're not knitting me. Mm -mm. I knit it all up and I was checking the size, make sure, and it looked just fine, finished the whole hat. It was too big by like an inch either way. I'm like, are you kidding me? What? Usually from their patterns, I knit tight, so I usually have to bump up needle sizes, not go down. However, 
I was knitting this in the round and that makes a huge difference. Usually I knit tighter in the round, so I don't know what happened. I think with this particular yarn, because it's thicker yarn than I usually work with, I didn't knit as tight. So I had to rip the whole thing out <laughs> and start over. And I kept making mistakes while I was doing it too and I had to keep pulling back rows. I'm like, what is wrong with me? I had no idea what was wrong with me with this hat. So I don't have the pom-pom done yet, but I can show you the fun color way. So you can kind of see the cables in there. They're a little more subtle in this yarn, but it's fun. But I'm glad it's stuck. <laughs> I'm so glad I finished knitting it because I was over this hat. As soon as I pulled that yarn through at the top, I was like, I'm out. All I have to do is a pom-pom, which is fine, but I'm taking a breather from that. I'm gonna go to the tassels on the blanket and let the hat sit a little bit. We need, we need a little, little separation, a little, our own time. My kryptonite, this hat. It was a super fun knit, it wasn't hard. I don't know what happened, but there are certain projects and you guys probably know what I'm talking about that just don't want you to knit them. It's just like, nope, I don't want it. Nope, nope, you're gonna make 100 mistakes, nope. You know what? It just happens. It happens to the best of us. Okay, what else do I have to show off? Oh, you guys! I've been knitting swatches for my boxy sweater by Pohi Locatelli. And at first, I start knitting my swatch, and I kind of, you know, like we all do, I kind of measured it a little while I was knitting it, which you're not supposed to do. But I did it anyway, and I was like, oh my goodness. Like, I have the same gauge as Pohi Locatelli. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so I started with, I think it's a four. I bumped up to a five. Still too small. Now I just bumped up to a six, which may still be too small, but I'm gonna block it. It's still dry. The other two are blocked, but my six, as you can see, is a little curly. But I'll show you one of the other ones so you can get an idea for the yarn. How fun is that yarn? Oh, Malabrigo. Oh, no, not Malabrigo. Uh, Tosh Merino Light. Oh my goodness. Those grays are gonna be so pretty in that sweater. I can't even. So pretty. And then my dilemma with this sweater is how long to knit it. Now, it's a it's a bottom up. So usually with the top down, I'm able to try them on and kind of say, okay, I like this length, I'm good. But this is a bottom up, so I won't have that luxury. And I'm like, uh-oh, but do, how long do I knit it? Do I go here, do I bump up because I have a long torso, but I wanna, when I wear it, I kind of I kind of picture it with it kind of off the shoulder with a tank top underneath. So I want the tank to show, so I don't want it too long. <sighs> decisions, decisions. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knit it to the shorter size, hold it up to me and see what I think, and then go with it. It's gonna be a game day decision. I keep going back and forth, but yeah. And I was able to try on my friend Robbie, photo knit gal, her boxy, which she had knit two inches smaller than the smallest, smallest size. So, and hers, I put it on and it was fine. It could add maybe a little bit of length, so I know. Man, I'm a little gun shy after this problem with knitting this hat, <laughs> so I haven't cast it on yet. I'm afraid, <laughs> especially since my gauge swatches are not working out. And I really don't want to bump up to a seven. I really like how the yarn looks at the six, which is what I usually use for my shawls for um, on, for fingering weight. So I'm like, ah, I really don't want it to be any drapier. So I don't know. <sighs> I gotta calm down. I'm gonna block it, and we'll see what happens. It's okay. Blocking makes everything better, usually. <laughs> and, oh my goodness, wait, wait till you guys see. <laughs> so Jen Lasan gifted me her Riley Rose shawl pattern and I'm really excited to knit it. And I was like, all right, I can't wait to go stash diving to go look for yarn for this shawl. Oh my goodness, you guys, I found yarn, it's so pretty. Wait till you see these colors. If you uh, are following me on Instagram, you've already seen the picture. But, oh my goodness. Oh, my goodness. oh that's so pretty. It's so pretty. I'm gonna do it like this. Boom. Look at these colors, right? Oh my goodness. Look at them. With the oranges and the greens, and then there's blue in that variegated. I, I can't, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to use these. I think that's gonna be so fun. Now I have, let's see, this is Madeline Tosh, no, nope. yep, it's Madeline Tosh, and they're fingering. This one is Socks That Rock by Blue Moon. Love it. I haven't knit with their yarn yet either, so I'm super excited to knit with it. 
and this is Dirty Water Dye Works, and I love the colorway in this one. It's called Ribbit. <laughs> Look at that green. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. <laughs> Those are going to be the yarns for my Riley Rose shawl. And I had these in skeins and was going to show them on the podcast in the skeins. I had, to, I had to wind them up. I was like, I need to wind them and have them ready to go. They're ready to go. <laughs> it's going to be so pretty. Like, you know when you know that yarn is just like, yes! Mm -hmm. So much yes. The last thing I have to show you, okay. Now, if you watched the last episode, you know I was playing Yarn Chicken with my Gail's Art uh, Watermelon Sock Yarn with my leftovers. Guess who won at Yarn Chicken again? What's up? Oh, oh, oh. I win. Ha ah, ha. Ankle socks with a little yarn to spare. Boom. But I am glad that I made these a little bit smaller than I normally would for a size seven foot because I definitely would have run out if I had knit any more rows. I had this little teeny roll of leftover yarn, so I just made it. Whew. Ha ha, but I win. I win at yarn chicken. So can you tell I'm a little proud of myself? You watch the next time I go to play yarn chicken, I'm gonna lose. Brings me back down a notch. My knitting humbles me. It does. All right. I can't wait. I'm totally stalling. I'm really like I'm building up to the exciting part. At least for me. <laughs> okay, except for this part, which is beverage of choice. <laughs> this one's really exciting. And my Frank Sheelan was so sweet. He said, go ahead, you can have a bottle of this. It's really, really hard to get beer. And our neighbors wound up getting us this beer. Um, my neighbors got chickens, which you probably saw in the intro to this podcast. I gave you some pictures of them. They got chickens. And I got to chicken sit. They were away for a few days, so I got to chicken sit. And sitting I did. I actually am such a goober. I brought over a towel so I could sit on the ground with them. I'm so lame, but I can't help it. And I was feeding them mealworms, which they love. Oh my goodness. Anyway. As a thank you for watching the chickens, she our neighbors actually stopped at Maine Brewing Company or Maine Beer Maine Beer Company. I was calling the wrong one, and got us some beer or picked it up for us. I mean, we gave we gave them money for us, but the fact that they stopped, I, you know, I kind of went a little out of their way to go get it. It was amazing. So thank you guys so much. <laughs> Maine Beer Company lunch their IPA, which is awesome. It's so good, and I'm actually even drinking it in my Maine Beer Company glass. Because I'm a goober. And here's their bottle. Let me show you that too. These aren't exactly bombers. Like at 22 ounce. These are, I think these are, what are these? Are these 16? Or it is on here. It's not one of the bigger bottles. You get like, I, I'm going to say it's just over 16, maybe even 18. It's, it's not a, a bomber size bottle, but it is bigger than a normal um, 12 ouncer. And that is lunch. I'll show you again. Yummy stuff. So, Cheers! Oh my goodness! I love that beer, and it it's so hard for us to get our hands on. At least for this um, this IPA at lunch, they do other lines of their beer do make it down by us, but that one is really hard to get your hands on, especially for IPA fans out there. They snap them up super quick. The fact that they were able to stop at the brewery for us meant they had it. Yes, and we have lunch. <laughs> I need to take another sip, sorry. Delicious. Mm. That is beverage of choice. Now, moving on to what I'm styling. I'm wearing this shirt for a reason. <laughs> it's another Harry Potter shirt, and it says, I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. Can't see it all the way down. Because I've been up to no good. Well, I, it's not no good, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> and I'll talk about that next. But I had to wear my Harry Potter shirt. And because it's one of my favorite phrases from the movie, that along with mischief managed, <laughs> it's super funny. Along with that, I am wearing my wolf scruff, scruff again, as a little kerchief because duh, it's red and it matches. I figured, why not? It's a pigtail kind of day. <laughs> oh, it's coming! It's coming! <laughs> Showing off, oh, you guys. I have been playing. Oh yes, I have. Now you know I talk about sock legs now a lot. I've, I've almost mentioned them in every single episode because I'm obsessed with them. I love knitting from sock blanks. So much fun. And for those of you who don't know what a sock blank is, if, especially if you're a new viewer and haven't seen me talk about them, 
it's a knitted piece of fabric that the dyer will dye and usually dyes like a pretty design on it and you unravel and knit right from that piece of fabric from it's called a sock blank oh so what happens is you don't really know how that'll knit up like the colors just kind of from the design just kind of go at random so it's kind of fun and then when you wear them later you know like those were my no, the watermelon socks are pretty much they they self-striped but one that has designs like from Andre Sue knits when she does her like monarch, monarch butterfly ones you don't see monarch, monarch butterflies when you knit the socks but you get the colors from them and you know when you wear them that they're your butterfly socks right love it love it so guess what I did <laughs> I dyed a sock like <laughs> yes I did never thought I was gonna get into dyeing but Frank has seen me with all these sock blanks and he's like, we could totally do that. And I'm like, I can. He's the one that got me designing too, so I kind of trust him. Just saying. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll look, I looked into it. I was actually really nervous to do it because there seems like there's so much information out there and not all of it ties together. So I'm like, what, what do I follow? Like, what dyes do I start with? And, you know, some people do this with it, others do that. And it was a lot, it was overwhelming. So I was really nervous to try it. And it's like, it's a practice <laughs> sock blank for a reason, but still I didn't want to totally screw it up. <laughs> I wanted it to at least look somewhat nice. And it does. Oh, oh my goodness. Wait till you see you guys. I made a Doug the Dog sock blank. Oh, yes I did. And my Frank Sheelan, I cannot thank him enough. He cut out the, the template for me. All the stencil he cut all of that out for me using a manila envelope or manila um, folder in order to do it yes he did he printed out the lettering and printed everything out and then with an exacto knife went and cut all of these out for me it took him hours I love that man <laughs> I seriously do and he came up with the idea too I had thought of paw prints and he's like well how about you do Doug the dog I'm like boom genius idea right so yeah I gave it a shot and I gotta thank Candy too from Pause for Stitches and she's my jar partner in crime had mentioned she mentioned guar gum and that is something that you use to kind of thicken up the dye and this is actually under my tips and tricks good segue and what it'll do is if you want like this see the dug it dug the dog how it doesn't really bleed as much into the other dye the guar gum helps thicken it up so that it does that and it actually stays it only bled a little bit and I could have let that guar gum set overnight, which they recommend, but I didn't because I was impatient. <laughs> I let it set a few hours while I set up and then while I dyed the turquoise color in the background. Oh my goodness, it made such a difference. So I'm really, really glad that I held in there, held on and found it. I went everywhere to try to find it. Like Stop and Shop has a natural food section, but they didn't have it. They had another type of gum, which the name is gone. And that's not the one I wanted. And I found out Whole Foods actually has a guar gum. So I was like, yes! Can you find it online? Absolutely. But I was determined, like last minute, I'm like, I, I was gonna let it go and just let the colors bleed and just give do a sample. But I'm like, no, if I'm gonna do a sample for this, I really want it to start using all the materials that I should use. Frank Sheila went on a mission and the man ran across town the, on last Sunday and went and got me guar gum. Again, I love this man. <laughs> And it was, I, I'm so glad he did, because it really did make such a difference. And I can't wait to kind of play with that a little bit more and do different stuff. <gasps> oh my goodness. And what I did with the turquoise too was really fun. So you can kind of see how it's doing almost a stripey effect. I wanted it to do that. So the socks almost do a self-striping and then you'll get those flecks of black from Duck the Dog. How fun is that? <laughs> I can't wait to knit this. I've been dying to knit this and I've been holding out so that I could show you the finished sock leg here well now when I'm done filming yay I can finally go cast on and knit these socks I've been dying I've been dying to knit them so impatient but I can't wait to show you the socks when they are knit which I'm sure they will knit up super quick even with my long list of knitting because the dog the dog socks <laughs> the little palm print <laughs> so excited yeah so I'm gonna play around with dyeing sock blanks some more and see where it goes I'm I'm super excited to try it again and I have a bunch of ideas and can't wait to show you guys wait till you see wait till you see the next idea I'm so hoping it works because if it does it's gonna be amazing at least for me <laughs> maybe not amazing for everybody but I will certainly love it if it if it 
comes out looking like it does in my head, I will love it. It'll be amazing. <laughs> Cue how many times I say amazing in this podcast episode. <laughs> okay, what are we on to next? Giveaways. Okay, good stuff. All right, so we have the jar along that I mentioned Candy from Paws, my, my jar partner in crime from Paws for Stitches. Our jar along is still running. If you are interested, you can enter in my group, in Candy's group. You know, you can do them both. You don't have to enter in just one group. You can enter in both for two chances to win each month. What's up? And we have a few entries already, so keep them coming, definitely. And if you knit more than one jar, that's more than one entry. Just saying. There's another one. There's one in there. I don't remember exactly who posted it. She's new to the group. Posted four jars, so she gets four entries. This is a good thing. And you can enter those four into Candy's group as well. Pause for stitches. Eight chances to win. Oh my goodness, I can do math. <laughs> I'm so silly. I can't even help it. <laughs> yeah, so there's the jar along. And if you want more information on the how-tos and the rules, go check out my show notes or go check out my Jen Sheila Ravelry group and you will see a thread for the jar along and you'll see the rules. Same for Candy's group. Go check out hers and she has threads going as well. Good stuff. The next one up. <laughs> this is a new one. <sighs> At least for me talking about it in the podcast. The Pigskin Party, hosted by Jen Lassand of the Downseller Studio Podcast. And she is Boston Jen on Ravelry. I am going to sponsor some prizes. <gasps> How excited am I? <laughs> I'm actually sponsoring physical prizes this time instead of patterns. And I may throw in a coupon code in there too. I'm still trying to figure that out. But I could show you, oh my goodness, the physical stuff that I'm going to sponsor. How fun is this? <laughs> I haven't posted in her group yet. So once I figure out the coupon and what I'm going to do, I'll launch it in her group. She has a thread going for the prize sponsors. <laughs> what I'm sponsoring is my stuff. I love my stuff. Again, warm fuzzies. I am sponsoring a Jen and tote bag. You see on the front it's got my logo and on the back it's got my funny phrase hug a knitter they give you warm fuzzies super cute a little subtle in the back there but I love knowing that it's there when I carry my bag because I think it's super funny <laughs> I know I think I'm hilarious I can't help it but at least I laugh at myself what else I'm sponsoring so I'm giving away a tote bag and I'm giving away one of my t-shirts and you can pick the style I have my v-necks in this fun soft fabric which I love and it also says hug a knitter they give you warm fuzzies on the front and has my logo up in the back check that out I love these shirts so much I love the style because they are super soft and I know they kind of have like a see-through effect but I love wearing it I'm a layer girl I love throwing a tank underneath and throwing one of these on because you still get like the softness from the shirt love them that and what size was this I wanted to show I think I'm showing a large these tend to run a little bit small because they're whip, they're cut, women cut, ladies cut, and they always tend to run a little small. So keep that in mind. And the other is I have just a crew neck too. And same deal. So it's hugging it or they give you warm fuzzies with my logo on the back. That is what I'm sponsoring for the big skin party. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I can't wait. I'm also sponsoring, I'm giving away a tote and a pattern in the Yarniax group for their uh, Colors of Fall knit along too. Oh my goodness. I can't stop sponsoring. I'm having so much fun. I'm all over the place. What? Mm -hmm. I know. It's craziness, but you know how I love a giveaway. I can't help it. I know. That is what I have for you guys today. Kind of a quick episode. It was really kind of all about that sock blank. <laughs> Not only was I kind of teasing you guys with I can't wait to show you. It was kind of torture for me too. I've been dying to film. And today was the first day that I could do it. So I was finally able to show it off. Oh my goodness. So comment in the group and tell me what you guys think and what you'd like to see. I'm, I'm dying to know. I'm really, <laughs> I said I'm dying to know. <laughs> that wasn't even on purpose. That was totally improv. Oh my goodness. I love me some puns. <laughs> All right. Last up, oh no, not last up. I have my new segment, Knit Reading. Oh, what have I knit read? Now, I call it Knit Reading because 
if I, if I taught myself to knit and read at the same time. If I didn't do that, I'd never get any reading in because I would always choose knitting first. It's just the way I roll. So now I'm knit reading. And I mentioned the book Omens by Kelly Armstrong last week that I was reading and I finished it. It was really good. But man, what a tease because I only read the first, it was the first book in a series and I can't get my hands on the next one yet. At least my library didn't have it. I don't even know if it's out. So I have to do a little research to see if it's out. But this was only the first book and it just kind of, the way it ends, I'm like, oh man, what a tease. But it totally makes you want to read the next book. That's how her books are. I love it. I love it and I get frustrated with it all at the same time. Oh, I love Kelly Armstrong books. I can't recommend her books enough. Especially if you're into that kind of like that supernatural reading. Super cool. Another one that's kind of light on the supernatural, more just about ghosts, um, is books by Heather Graham, the author. <laughs> and the one I'm reading now, actually I just finished this right before I filmed, is The Killing Edge. Really, really good book. And boy, at the end I was like, really? Totally surprised. Like I, I guessed really wrong. I was way off. Really, really good. Definitely check out her books as well. I like how all her books are definitely have something to do with ghosts and how they help people and you know certain people can talk to ghosts and all that. I love that kind of stuff. I really do. I'm, I'm into it and I really enjoyed it. Really, really good book. So I'm reading another one by hers now. I don't have the title in front of me, but I will mention it on the next episode. It's a little bit different. I didn't realize she does kind of like a historical romance type of deal, I believe. That's at least what it looked like on the cover and what it's reading like so far. I'm kind of cool. I'm, I'm into that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to admit it. Yes, I will read historical romance. I like cheesy romance. I like steamy romance. I can't help myself. <laughs> so I'm kind of hoping that's what this is, especially with her writing style. I think it'd be really cool. I know. I know. I, I'm cheesy and I do. I like a good cheesy romance that you just kind of curl up with and you're like, oh my goodness, he did what? Oh, like that kind of book. Love it. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, last up now is what's up with my patterns. Now, you saw my long list of knitting that I have to do. My poncho pattern is still in the works. It's been temporarily parked, but it is coming back. Um, I do need to do some tweaking on the pattern. I just need a little bit of time. And now that I've, <laughs> one, I have my huge list of knitting and now I added in something else to do, which I hadn't planned on, it's kind of been parked, but it's definitely in the works and I definitely want to make that happen. So keep your, your eyes and your ears out for it. Because once I have a little bit more progress, I will show you what I've done. So, mm -hmm. I really want to finish that poncho. I'm like really inspired, but I've just been so busy. And I really, it's going to be one where I really need to sit down and think when I design it and really work out the math. I do math, but worth it, worth it. It'll be worth it in the end because I really, really like where the pattern was going. Exciting stuff. Oh my goodness. All right, so that is all I have for you guys today. We should say goodbye to Doug the dog. Or are you gonna get up, lazy boy? You should see how he's laying right now. Like I actually wanna take a picture of it just so you guys can see. Hold on a minute while I get my phone. You, need, you guys need to see this. Like, I should put this at the end of the episode because this is just obscene. God bless. Shame on you. Got it. Yeah, I will put it at the end of this episode so you can see with this shameless boy. This is how he sleeps. I don't even know how it's comfortable. <laughs> Doug, you ready to say goodbye? You want up? Do you want a cookie? Come here. Do you want a cookie? You gotta get up. All the way. Yes, you do. Can you spin for mama? Spin. No, you gotta spin. <laughs> I know you can do it. <laughs> Come here, you. You up. No, that's roll over. You up. Ready? You spin. That's my boy. Good. <laughs> Finally, I got him to do that, you guys. All right. Well, you guys, I hope you have a good couple of weeks, and I will see you soon. Bye, guys. You ready? And go get it. Good boy! Come on, love! And he drops it in the